Good morning. Pastor John Stern here with you again this day. It seems like the weeks fly by. Uh, for us old men, I just want to tell you when emerald ash borer comes to your yard, make sure that those who come are going to do the tree. But if they call you and say, now wait a minute, we notice that there's a lot of stuff around that tree. You're going to have to clean it out because if you don't, we're going to have to charge you that much more money. My back hurts. Just to save a couple of hundred bucks. Oh. Anybody know what emerald ash bore is? It's a coming. Just for an example. My wife and I walk. We're supposed to walk every day. So I said, I'm going to take one mile, and on the way back, don't say a word. I'm going to count every tree that's at least 30% or 40% shot to completion, including ours. How many trees in one mile in Apple Valley did I go on one mile just by the Apple Valley High School area? Just one mile of trees that were on the boulevard or in the yards of those next to the yard, next to the road. How many trees did I count? 102 are going to be dead by next year. Now it's down to 101. And I, oh, God's peace be with you. It is the closing dates of the Gospel of St. Matthew, which we will, of course, base our sermon on today. Think of the word discipleship, because Levi changed his name to Matthew or Matthias, which means Disciple, follower, student, one who listens and learns the word of God. And becoming a tax collector, he saw his, worth, his life was worthless. And Jesus said to him, follow me. And the rest is history. We have Matthew's gospel. God's peace be with you now. Please rise. We begin our worship service now in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. We take a moment to consider our sinful condition, pondering our needs, and becoming a recipient of God's unending grace. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us. Forgive us, forgive us, and forgive us. That we may be right in our will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son Jesus to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. And I was a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority I therefore forgive you all your sins now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Proceeded to sing. Today your mercy calls us 915.
Please rise, if able. O Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Come, let us sing. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We speak now Psalm 40, Antiphonally. I waited patiently for the Lord. He drew me up from the pit of destruction, out of the miry bog. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us. None can compare with you. sacrifice and offering you have not desired, but you have given me an open ear. And then I said, Behold, I have come. I desire to do your will, O my God. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. As for you, O Lord, you will not restrain your mercy from me. <clears throat> for evils have encompassed me beyond number. My iniquities have overtaken me, and I cannot see. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. 
let those who put to shame and disappointed all together who seek to snatch away my life. Let those be appalled because of their shame. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. As for me, I am poor and needy, but the Lord takes thought for me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Be seated to sing. 843, forgive our sins as we forgive. The Old Testament reading for today is Genesis chapter 50. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, It may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil that we did to him. So they sent a message to Joseph saying, Your father gave this command before we died. Say to Joseph, Please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin." because they did evil to you. And now, please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear. I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading today is from Romans chapter 14. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him but not to quarrel over opinions. One, person's believe, one person believes he may eat anything, while a weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains. And let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls. And he will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. 
Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day, observes it in honor of the Lord. The one who eats, eats in honor of the Lord. Since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might not be, that he might be both Lord of the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or you, why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us will give an account of himself to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. And then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? And Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven will be, may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. And when he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold, with his wife and children and all that he had, and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, have mercy with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me, and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. And then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his master delivered him to the jailers, the tormentors, until he should pay all his debt. And so also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. This is the gospel of the Lord. Our response Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Proceeded now to sing, Lift High the Cross, 837.
Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to be multiplied upon all of you here this day. And so we pray. Dear Father in heaven, open our minds and hearts to always hear your word. When someone like Peter gets in the way, he is told by Jesus, get out of my way, Satan. For you are trying to prevent me from going to the cross. Lift high the cross, a song that we seminarians sang over 50 years ago, nearly every other day. It means so much, not to get in Jesus' way, but to get behind him and follow in his way. We hear that as it proclaims, it is being said to us this day and always. Jesus, your name be praised. Amen. Follow Jesus. Oh, forgiveness. That's right. We can't forget about forgiveness. Forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. An okay word. You have to deal with the Greek and the mindset of those who wrote these words nearly 2,000 years ago. And you have to understand it is Jesus' prayer not for himself, but for the people, his disciples to pray. It is more than the Lord's Prayer. It is our prayer to God. Forgive us. Interesting that Matthew chapter 18 is referred to as that chapter that we find in almost every single constitution of the Missouri Synod. Is it in ours? I don't know. Here at Redeemer? Well, look it up. Check it out. Because you see in there, and of course this goes back a couple of Sundays or two, regarding reconciliation. Bringing back the lost sheep. Instead of kicking people out of church, why don't we invite them into church? Say, there's an idea. That's what evangelism is all about. Not getting rid of the dead wood, but bringing in the people who are sinners discounting the person who says, I'm such a sinful person, I can't even go to church. Wrong! That's why you should go to church and hear the word of God's grace. Forgiveness, a way of life. You've got these words that are translated into various translations of English among many, many, many other translations in the scriptures throughout the world's languages and there are many so when you hear the song our father when you hear that song it has to be one symbol instead of trespass says it fits better to have one symbol and forgive us our what debts as we forgive our debtors that's the old way of singing the prayer debt. What? Who's in debt here? Come on, let's all get those hands up. All right, maybe you're not in debt, but a lot of people are because you see that has to do with money. What, over a trillion dollars is due to the various agencies who give out loans and then you're supposed to repay how come the Minneapolis Tribune takes its almost entire sections, especially the Minnesota one or the Twin Cities one, and especially even the sports section, how dare they list all the what? Foreclosures. It would take a week to learn them all. How many are there? Every week people can't pay their debt. Does God forgive your mortgage? I doubt it. Does he write a check to your Visa or MasterCard, whoever handles it for you, before you get identity stolen? Which happened to me a few months ago. You gotta go through all of that. It's another story. We made it. A debt. No one likes debt. 
So they soften the blow a little bit, some of those translators, and say, forgive us our trespasses, like in the King James Version. Or here's a better one, forgive us our sins. If you called up, uh, say, U.S. Bank Corp., where my son works, and says, listen, I can't pay the debt. Will you forgive it for me, please? What? I said, would you forgive my debt for me, please, so that I can forgive debts that others who owe me money? That won't fly. Because it deals with money. So we get that, that forgiveness of loan and forgiveness of debt, because even loan, forgive us our loans, is in one translation. Forgive our loans as we forgive others. Oh, how easy it is to ask somebody, please forgive what I owe. But if I gave my, no, I better, I gotta be careful here now. Uh, when three of our kids went through college, we had to pay a few of those parent loans and things. And they would often say, well, dad, mom, we'll pay you back someday. We're still waiting. <laughs> well, we forgave those debts. It felt good for them and us too. It really did. So here you got Matthew 18. It's called the discipline chapter also. Maybe you've heard it recently about the pastors who would look through the Constitution and find out about church discipline. Now it's interesting, isn't it? Maybe it was said to you, the word discipline and the word disciple is from the same word. Think about it. The word disciple and disciple then or discipline is the same word in the root form of the ancient language. As you heard well read from Genesis 50, how the brothers came together. That's a key word. The brothers came together. On the spot, Joseph could have said to them, you are all going to die. Well, first of all, they were going to die because there was a terrible famine. So they sought out help from Egypt, not knowing the brother was alive. And so there was this little gamemanship going on here. And Joseph, in a sense, said to them, in a real sense, come, let's have a meal. A meal? A meal of grace? A meal of love? A meal of forgiveness? A meal of reconciliation? What a world it would be if our powers, our people in power could get together and be reconciled to one another. I'm not going to bet on that possibility because like us, they're human and sinners. Like us, they too can be self-centered. And like many, they can be the ones in charge and therefore tell others what to do. It goes like that in our world. It has ever since the time from the morning. Back in the old days, look at the tyrants that took the people of Israel into captivity. 400 years after Joseph had died, that they had to remain in Egypt as slaves of the wicked pharaohs. Oh my. Well, Joseph married into the Egyptian culture because there was nowhere going back because all the land of the north and Palestine was vacated due to extreme drought. So they were stuck pleading with God forgive us we are sorry. It took over 400 years for them to be reconciled in a sense somewhat forgiven but enabled by God to leave their land of slavery, only to go after King David into the land of, there they were, Joshua leading him into the battle, Moses looking on from the other side because he had killed, he had murdered an Egyptian himself. And he didn't do what God said along the way. He slapped the rock and said of speaking to it and things like that got him into a little bit of trouble. But he was at least able to get to the side and look over and say, there's the land, now I can die. And he did. You see, Moses gave his life to 
to reconcile the people to God and bring them to the land called holy. A land of promise. A land of hope. But things happen. After Solomon, who got messed up with a bunch of women from other cultures, you know, a very wise man, but for him, all was vanity. He lost it all. What a sadness. He built the temple, but then he died. The land was divided into two, north and south. The Assyrians of the north came and took the people into slavery again. Yes, you serve the Assyrian Caesar. No, Tsar, no, Emperor of Syria. Will you ever get back to your home again? We're going to have to wait and see. They were let off in chains with the rings in their noses connected to one another just so no one would run away. It was that severe. How they were shamefully treated. Eventually, they got back home again. But then the south. Ah, Jeremiah the prophet. When asked by the king, Prophet, what will we do? The enemy is coming. And the prophet would say to him, my words, nothing. It's too late. And so they were taken into captivity, this time for a mere 70 years. Keep the word 70 in mind. A mere 70 years. Finally, there was reconciliation. They are allowed to go back. Thank you, Esther. Thank you, Mordecai. Thank you, God. Darius said, go back. You'll still be a slave of ours, but from a distance. You'll pay taxes to us, but at least you will have your own property. Thank you. How those people have been held in slavery. Was it due to sin? Yes. Were they punished to die? Yes. Were they punished to live? Yes. With God provided. They were faithful to his word, even to the end. That's where it is. Faithfulness and forgiveness. They go together. So in church discipline, I'll get to that in the end to give you an interesting illustration how things can go poorly in a church or two. When you look at Matthew 18, it's got all this stuff going for it. The Lord's Prayer was there in chapter 6, of course. King James says debts, debtors. RSV says debts. NIV says debts. It doesn't say trespasses. It's like walking on somebody's property. Get up in there. No, it's not so much trespassing. It is what you owe your God for what he has done for you. Can you ever pay him fully the debt? Jesus gives an example, a parable. There was the Lord God who sent his slave out to work, came back, and the slave owed him 10,000 Someone estimated that in currency today, which is inflated beyond our belief, to be four billion dollars. How can a slave pay four billion dollars when he probably makes 25 cents an hour? Someone estimated that he would have to work for 200,000 years before the debt was paid. He pleaded, Lord, forgive me. He did go. On the way, he finds a man who owes him a few denarii, a day's wage. Roughly the equal to, if you add it all up, how much was he mowed? 4,000 bucks. He said to him, I'll pay you. Grabbed him by the throat, beat him to a pulp. Pay me what you owe. How can a man who has just been forgiven a debt of billions of dollars threaten the life of someone who owed him chump change in terms of that wealth? Jesus makes a point by being exaggerating when Peter asks, well, how many times should I forgive somebody? I'm getting sick of this because they're always coming after me and I'm getting sick and tired because even the disciples would argue with one another, and they did. They wondered which one of us is going to be, which two of us will be the first in heaven. Oh, what? What do you say? Remember how they argued? Those two brothers who wanted to be first and second next to Jesus in heaven. The other disciples looked at them like, 
we were with you too. Aren't we going to be there? See how that goes. Even the disciples at that moment couldn't get along. Jesus knew what was in their hearts, and he reminded them, you are lacking in forgiveness. You are lacking in faithfulness. You are lacking in faith, and you are lacking in your reconciliation. And the Greek word is symphonagos, which our English word is symphony, which means harmony. The worst thing I hear is when I t watch that stuff, and I almost turn it off. I, I really turn it off. When they start screaming and yelling and calling it music, it's at that point, you've lost me. That's not music. That's noise. And that's what hell is like. Constant disharmony. It hurts your ears and your heart. What have we become? We have lost harmonization. We have lost the strains and the beautiful symbols of a symphony orchestra that plays beautifully together. See, that's like life. It would be so much better if we could just be on, in tune, together with one another. Why don't we try that and see how that goes? I'll bet you it'll go better. Okay. So having all this, the problem is forgiveness is not easy. So when Jesus said to Peter, how many times should I uh, forgive? Uh, how about seven times? <laughs> seven. Various translations say 77 times. Others say 70 times seven, 490 times. That's more than one a day in a year. I, I'm, that's, I, can't, I'm, I can't keep up. How do I do it? You've heard the old terms like, uh, forgive and forget. All right, the guy walks out the corner. I'll forgive you, but I'm never going to forget. Well, so much forgiveness on that. That lasted about three seconds. Because if you don't forget, you haven't forgiven. How about the old turn? Ah, let's just bury the hatchet. Let's get along, you and me. Okay, I'll just bury the hatchet. But I tell you, when you leave, I'm keeping that handle up. Ah, uh, yes, how it works. The Hatfields, the McCoys. Some of us are old enough to understand what that was all about. An ongoing quarrel, dispute, and they never did really reconcile. Ah, then the gossip. That can cause trouble. Yes, even gossip. In a church in southwest Minnesota, I was a member of a congregation back there about 40-some years ago, 45 years ago. Uh, there was a congregation down there in an unnamed Missouri Center Church where the ladies were getting lunch ready in the kitchen and one lady overheard another lady around the corner say something very bad about her. And she says, I'm getting a lawyer and I'm going to sue her for defamation of my character. And she did. I asked the pastor when I saw him again at his, ordination, at his installation in another church, well, you made it out of there. How is it going now? It's ongoing. The only people who are coming out of this are, of course, the lawyers. They'll settle any case if it takes them 50 years, as long as the bucks keep coming in. By that, you've lost your entire estate. It wasn't even worth it. And why would one woman take another woman in church and go to court, to a civil court? It's even scriptural not to do that a believer and a believer. You don't take a fellow believer. You go to that believer and you get it straight yourself. You don't go to court. It messed up the whole church. It was a sad scenario. It really was. They're both deceased by now. Hopefully they had reconciliation. I could give you another story. I'll wait till the end of that one. Here we go. A couple of examples of true, true forgiveness. Go back in time with me. In the last X number of years have been two serious attempts at assassinating the Pope from Rome. In one instance, it was found and he was put in jail, a pro-Palestinian terrorist. And there, he pleaded for release. The Pope came and visited him and he forgave him. He forgave him his sin and he begged 
that he be released now that he has been reconciled to me and to his people. Then there was that other one. I still can't get over it. How a woman can go to a courtroom, an Amish woman, and see the murderer face to face who killed five members of her family in cold blood and say to him, I forgive you, and walks out. How can that be? I forgive you. Blessed be God. Think about that. And then there's that other one. This is my interesting story. I was made a circuit counselor, I think on purpose, in the area of Mitchell, South Dakota, where my wife and I were married. It was a good relationship until I had to settle a situation that was most unbecoming. The church became vacated. There was a vacancy, and a pastor came in. The first thing he said to his board of elders, are you an elder? Here's what the pastor would say. I'll take the call. If you and I work together in getting rid of the dead wood in this church, are you on board? Because if you're not, I'm going to do it myself, which he did. In the five years that, in the uh, three years that he was there, I was dating my young bride-to-be. The problem was, as a circuit counselor, I had to deal with him, and I also had to deal with my father-in-law, who was the, the chairman of the congregation. And they didn't exactly agree with each other. I went to the district office and said, I want a call. I need, I cannot, I cannot may, at least may I resign my office. I can't be a settler of that ongoing dispute because, well, they're both bullheaded. Let's just say it in terms. Well, the pastor was successful. In three years, he got rid of one-third of his congregation, including his wife. She went out to Rapid City to be a teacher and settle for a divorce. It's interesting, isn't it, that right outside of Rapid City, South Dakota, there's a little town called Deadwood near Sturgis. He got rid of the Deadwood, all right. Be careful what you say. How do we end this? Forgiveness. It depends on our faithful, forgiving Father, our God. That's where we depend on our faithful, forgiving God. And now, Father in heaven, forgive me my sins and debts to you as I will forgive those that come against me. Because if I don't do it, the Father won't. He says, unless you forgive those debts of your sinners to you, I will not forgive you. And forgive us our debts as we forgive those who are indebted to us. Isn't that what we pray in the Lord's Prayer? Do we take it seriously? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. We have to. Why? Because forgiveness is a way of life. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue now by singing the hymn, Holy God, we praise thy name, 940. Sorry. 